What is going on, Thumb Thumbs? This is Semper32, bringing you guys our post recap video for our first battle of the LDL Season 6. If you guys are wondering what the LDL is, it is uh, the Lonely Draft League that uh, I am in and I am a part of, alongside with a bunch of friends that belong to TLTPG, the Lonely Trainers Pokemon Gang. If you guys don't know about them, then I definitely suggest go ahead and checking out their own YouTube channel because a lot of the battles are going to be on that channel. We have our own website, own merch shop. Uh, like it, it, it's crazy it's honestly super crazy so definitely go ahead and check them out so you guys know what's going on because it's this whole league it's this whole group that I'm a part of but um we are facing the Winpig Jellicent here for week one as you guys do see uh, versus coach Matt uh, who was LDL season 5's champion and uh, if you guys uh, didn't know, I actually put up a team builder late last night, so definitely make sure you go ahead and check that out. I go over each of the mons uh, that I'm bringing, why I'm bringing th them, and uh, as you guys do see on the screen, though, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Uh, he does bring the Mega Altaria, the Lucario, the Arcanine, the Hoopa, surprisingly, the Mammal Swine, and the Rotom Cud. I'm pretty sure I said this in the team prep video, but uh, if, if uh, Rotom Cut did come it was going to be very very problematic uh, just because I didn't uh, as, as I explained to the team builder I don't didn't have a designated special wall this week because I didn't feel like Matt would bring uh, some of his special Pokemon uh, just because uh, he does have so many physical attackers I don't think he would have realized it but he ended up bringing two of them actually We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and jump into the into the video now. I'm gonna be pausing uh, throughout it though, just to kind of explain my thoughts uh, during the video. I'm actually gonna scoop this over. And so going into this, I'm thinking, uh, like, what Pokemon should I lead off with? I mean, that's a very scary lead. I mean, the Mammal Swine's gonna be crazy uh, to lead off with the Arcanine. Uh, the the Rotom Volt Switch is is a potential. He could send in Altaria to set up uh, Mam Mammal Swine, like I said, to get up rocks. Um, and so, if the Mammal Swine did come in, or or the Rotom, I figured that uh, Cuties in our Infernape was going to be the best lead. So that is actually what I ended up doing. And Matt, surprisingly, here actually goes into he starts off and leading his Altaria. And so I'm looking at the Calx. I'm like, if this thing Mega evolves, and I go for the gunk shot uh, it's gonna do upwards of 75% and he and uh, he's probably thinking that oh I, I'm just gonna swap swap out because he's got to have gunk shot and so I stayed in like an idiot uh, we are scarfed which does allow us to outspeed this thing even at plus one so if it went for a dragon dance we could stay outspeed, speed hit it again but this is what was scary is um, so we go so he actually stays in here uh, and I'm thinking, oh, it's just gonna Dragon Dance, it's gonna Cotton Guard, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna do something, but we're gonna do a huge amount of damage to it, so it g goes and Mega Evolves, and we are gonna go ahead and get the Gunk Shot off, our first Gunk Shot of the season, and we land it, and as you guys do see, this does just about what I, what I, what I estimated, about 75%, and on top of that, we do end up getting the Poison, which is so, so nice, turn one, but he ends up going for the Hyper Voice, we have a special attacking uh, Mega Altaria, and we see we just barely live on 17 which is super super crazy in and of itself and here I'm thinking I just need to go for another gunk shot to deal off more damage I can outspeed this thing but in comes Arcanine now and Arcanine's uh, I, and I feared was gonna be the intimidate set the bulky intimidate set which it was so we end up just getting off a little bit of damage on him with another gunk shot and once again ladies and gentlemen we get the poison off but as we do see that does about 25% damage so I'm not mad I am honestly not uh, realizing I need to keep my Infernape around though I do have to swap out and I'm thinking who is the best person to really handle this I mean I'm going straight up into bra like my slow bro is just so des is really designed to do this but he actually goes for the substitute which I honestly found quite shocking uh, just because um, with the poison, though, he is going to be worn down a lot faster the more turns that he goes for. And so I was honestly quite shocked to see the substitute here with the, such a bulky Arcanine being poisoned and stuff. But he does outspeed. He goes for the Morning Sun. I know that my uh, Scald's going to be breaking the sub no matter what, even if he's fully specially defensive. And the poison damage is, is uh, going to be doing uh, enough damage where I think he's just sitting right above half if I'm not mistaken like around 60 65 percent 
uh, we'll have to see here. But as, as I said, the substitute fades, which is uh, really, really nice. Uh, yeah, about 60, 65 percent, almost 70. But he goes ahead and withdraws the Arcanine because he doesn't want to take the Scald. And I realize he doesn't have Wild Charge at this point, which is super nice. But he ends up sending the Rotom. I'm going to go ahead and get the Scald off uh, just to get damage off on something. We do not get the burn here, but I do see that he's lefties, which is really, really nice. I'm thinking uh, it might be a more bulky set, but I'm actually going to go ahead and swap right into my Rotom. I mean, not into my Rotom, my uh, Jolteon, thinking that he might Volt Switch out. Uh, he actually goes for the Toxic, and he actually does land it, uh, so props to him. You know, we trade a, uh, two Toxics for one so far. Uh, and so, I'm be me being a spec Jolteon, I'm thinking, well, what's my best move here? He can go for a Leaf Storm, um, or he can definitely swap out into something. I'm just gonna, I think what I did here is I just went for the straight Shadow Ball, uh, just to hit this thing as hard as I can. And what ended up happening is Lucario actually comes in. And so, I'm like, oh, this is awesome, Lucario's like one of the biggest threats on the team. I'm gonna go ahead and get that off. I get a crit, knock him all the way to the red, but... I was super scared here, I'm like, oh no, what berry just activated, the Salica berry just activated, ladies and gentlemen, which boosts Lucario's speed by one stage, and here I'm thinking, oh god, he's got Earthquake, he's got he's got something, he's gonna just wreck me, I'm done, I'm swept, this Lucario's too much, uh, my only... Like, if he has extreme speed, it's over, because the only thing that could potentially get rid of him is going to be the, is, is going to be our Inferni. And so I'm like, well, Jolteon is the least, is the most leastful, ugh, is the most, uh, useless member. I shouldn't say useless. He's the, he's the Pokemon I don't need the, m how do I say this? Jolteon is the Pokemon that I don't need the most. There we go. And so I decide just to stay in and go for the um, go for the Shadow Ball. And he actually ends up going for the Meteor Mash, which I do resist. And so as you guys do see, we tank that like a freaking champ. And the Shadow Ball comes off and knocks out the Lucario. And <coughs> already I'm thinking this is one of the biggest threats that he had on his team to handle a lot of my Mons. And I'm so glad that it's finally gone. And here comes the Mammal Swine now. And I'm like, uh, he's, he's probably thinking I'm going to be swapping Outbeat just because, um, you know, I want to preserve this thing. It's a very, very heavy hitter. But at this point, I'm still thinking Jolteon isn't going to be around much longer. It's poison just like Infernape. I don't really need it. It's, it did better than I ever thought it could. Which, uh, now looking back, I really do wish I kept it around. Uh, but I was fearing the Ice Shard, and I didn't, I really didn't want anything to take the Ice Shard. And Fernape couldn't have lived it. Um, uh, as well as, uh, I didn't, I just didn't want anyone else to take damage. I could have gone into, uh, Slowbro, but I was fearing the Earthquake, and Earthquake did so much damage. Uh, so I just stayed in and I went for another Shadow Ball being specs into it and you will just see how much damage this this does I was trying to figure out if it was a Assault Vest set, which it's not and we get the special defense drop But he does get up the rocks and that was the fear I should have brought Komala or I should have put defog on something because now he is in I don't believe can come in and now Scyther takes 50% to rocks and on this turn Jolteon unfortunately does go down to uh does go down to poison but i bring in bruh because it's the safest thing uh the only thing he can touch me with is earthquake so he's gonna go ahead and swap and go right back into uh he actually goes into hoopa and i was so close i'm clicking shadow ball because it did the most damage to the uh the rotom and the skull still goes off i get another crit and a burn like i don't i, I said this I'm sorry. Oh, did I just... Oop, my bad. I just hit replay. <laughs> my bad, guys. But we get the crit. We get the burn. And, you know, that sucks. Like, and, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to say... Like, because I said this in the team builder. I said this in the team builder. I don't want a haxy battle. But I've gotten two crits. I've gotten two poisons. And now I've gotten a burn. Matt's only gotten one toxic off. Which, I just feel bad. But at the same time, it's... Like, I, I, like, I still, I, I just feel bad, because, like, the hacks definitely were on my side. I got two crits, two, like, I, just like what I said, two crits, two toxics, two toxics in a burn, and they ended up coming into play, unfortunately, and so, I mean, I'm sorry, Matt, that's really all I can say, but I'm happy I got those burn, I'm happy I got this burn off. 
And so the Hoopers burned it down to 50% HP. I don't want to stay in, fearing the Shadow Ball. So I'm going to go ahead and swap right out into my uh, Crocodile liability. Uh, he's the best one to take the hit for any Ghost Stab. I did fear a little bit of the Focus Blast, um, which I was right to. As you guys will see later on, but he does end up going straight for the Shadow Ball, and you guys will see right here, we will actually eat that pretty well. Um, and if this thing is, I was wondering if this thing was scarved, because I know that's how, um, I know that's how most Hoopas are run, or maybe it was Specs, but that didn't look like Specs damage to me, so, uh, and I didn't see any Life Orbs, so I was praying that he was scarfed into Shadow Ball, and that was just going to allow me to go ahead and get some awesome damage off here, um, potentially get a knockout on something and I debating on on what to go into uh, what move to hit uh, I should have hit superpower because it would have done a huge amount of damage but I just went for the, the knockoff here and uh, you'll guys see do see that does a huge amount of damage on um, to that Rotom and this is where I was actually really confused because uh, when it came to the Rotom that did a lot a lot of damage and usually I, when I was looking at this I was thinking well is this thing offensive with leftovers is it specially defensive with leftovers uh, be just because it, like I still feared it being a very offensive set and that damage looked to me it looks like it was offensive and matches through leftovers on it because he didn't know what else to put on it like maybe it had pain split on it just for the, just for the lulls and so I debated whether or not I outsped this thing or not, if it was scarfed itself or something, but I knew I definitely outsped it by one point, even if it was max speed. That's what we built this liability for. And I'm thinking, well, if liability goes down here, I can at least get up my rocks. And so, uh, oh no, actually this, I swapped out here. I don't get up rocks until later, but I went right into Hiruzen uh, to take the rocks damage to guarantee a free switch into something that could uh, handle this Rotom extremely well. So unfortunately, rocks take our Hiruzen down and we do see see the will whips and that was when I was so afraid but here I can go into spearmint I as you guys do see <laughs> rocks do 50% to me but a bug bite guaranteed me to uh, guaranteed me to knock it out and I was like well do I roost do I go for the attack and uh, so the Arcanine comes in and I should have roosted here uh, but instead I just wanted to get off any damage I could and I prayed the Arcanine wouldn't come in but of course it does and so the Arcanine comes in but we, the poison damage is stacking up and I'm thinking okay I gotta swap here he's gonna heal up but that poison damage is still racking up I get almost a free, a free switch into bruh that regenerator is coming in so handy because we're just back up at full the whole entire time and now more and more Matt is running out of uh, switch-ins to this Slowbro, which is really, really nice because this whole time I'm thinking Slowbro is actually my way to win this match. Uh, and so I don't remember what exactly I went for here. Did I go for the damage on Scald again or did I go for the Shadow Ball this time? Oh, I went for the Psychic. It was, it was a toss-up. Psychic did more damage or it was the Shadow Ball. And so... Uh, so I, I got, I, I read, the, I did get a, I had an awesome read, I had psychicked it, anything could knock it out, I went right back out into Spearmint, thinking, oh, it's not gonna do anything, uh, and he actually goes for the Leaf Storm and ends up missing, Matt, my dude, I am so sorry, I am so, so sorry, of all things, dude, oh, I'm just so sorry, that sucks, I've been there. I've been there with the misses week one, my dude. It's terrible. But realizing that the Rotom was going to switch, um, on the off chance that he didn't Volt Switch it, uh, because he knew I outsped, um, I was just going to go for the Roost to get back more health. I had to get back more health. I was at 1 HP, and in comes the Mammo Swine. And here was what was really, really scary, because Ice Shard, I don't believe, knocked me out, but Icicle Crash did. So here was my opportunity, if I'm not mistaken, to go ahead and get damage off on this Mammal Swine. And so I went for the Aerial Lays, just in case he did decide to swap out into something. And as you do see, that does a huge amount of damage, knocking him into the red. Matt goes ahead and lands an Icicle Crash. Congrats, Matt. You landed the Icicle Crash. And Spearmint goes down, of course. Uh... <laughs> So now, uh, Bruh has to come back in. Bruh, I'm thinking right now, is the way to win this match. Um, and so, I'm just gonna go for, I think I went for another Psychic, and he just straight up goes for the damage here, uh, to guarantee more, uh, just that my health is lower, and which, as you do see, that does a huge amount of damage. But the Psychic comes through, uh, lands on the Mammal Swine, knocks it out, Bruh's taking the, Bruh's taking lives. 
uh, now he heads back into his Altaria, and here I was thinking, well, does Altaria get, does Altaria get a, uh, what's it, what's it called, a, a grass move? And I was, I was, wasn't sure if it did or not, so I'm thinking, if it goes for the Hyper Voice, this is the perfect opportunity for me to swap into my, uh, my Mega Aggron finally, and it goes for the Roost, and I'm like, okay, it's a special wall, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a special defensive wall, it's gotta have Cotton Spore, it's gotta have Cotton Spore. And so here I'm able to get off my, um, here I, I debated whether or not to go for Earthquake or not, but I'm like, no, I just need to guarantee to knock this thing out unless it sets up in front of me if I go for something else. So I ended up being an idiot and going for the Heavy Slam, and after that Intimidate, it's just, it's just pitiful, <laughs> it's just pitiful damage to this Arcanine, like, uh, Blazing Squid, who actually ended up sending me this recording, uh, he just laughed when he saw this part. I'm like, I can't blame him for laughing. I, I'm laughing too, you know? But, <laughs> I mean, I can still potentially live uh, Flare Blitz and all that stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, he's actually gonna swap out. He's gonna go into Rotom, predicting the Slowbro to come in. While for me, I'm actually going to swap into my uh, Crocodile, which is really, really nice. I read that perfectly because Crocodile can outspeed, and I was still fearing that he might not outspeed for some uh, choice scarf reason. But I was super, I was super, super lucky here, and I got the read right because Crocodile could now put in work. Uh, so he goes ahead, swaps out of Rotom. I'm gonna go ahead. He goes into the Arcanine. I think all I did was, did I actually earthquake or did I knock off here? <coughs> I I think I earthquaked, uh, but he's minus one. No, this is where I get up Stealth Rock. That's right. It was the nice, safe play. It was the safe play. So now, because uh, he had to be fearing the Stone Edge. That now, now that I'm uh, rewatching this back. But now poison damage comes off, and even at minus one, we could still do a lot of damage to this thing, which I really, really liked. So we stayed in, we go for the earthquake, just to make sure that this thing just gets more and more poison damage off, and we actually get the knockout, because I it must have not been 252 HP, because that, because the calc said it would only do max, like, 40 four percent, and that thing was, I think, right about 50 percent. But now in comes the Altaria. And I'm thinking, well, Rock's damage is going taking it down to a very, very nice uh, level. So I went for the Earthquake again. Like, because, you know, why not? It did. It was dealing good damage. And so we do see that Altaria just barely lives. And he ends up going for the Cotton Garden. Matt did say that this was a misplay. He should have just attacked. I'm thinking I would have swapped out. I first, yeah, I think he would. He should have roosted, uh, just to guarantee to live any hit or get back any health that happened. But as we do see, that is a one HP Altaria. We're gonna go for the knockoff just on the off chance he does decide to do some sh crazy shenanigans because Rotom's still around for potential defog. So I went for the knockoff to be safe. And liability gets a gets a knockout. We get our health all the way back, almost all the way back up with uh, leftovers. And this is where I I knew that. I could, this is where I will say I messed up. Um, I've been keeping up with the video really, really well. Holy cow. Um, but when it came to Hoopa, I'm like, there's a 50-50 shot that he does or doesn't have Focus Blast. And I know my luck with Focus Blast. You know I know my luck with Focus Blast. I never miss a Focus Blast. I think out of all the times I used it on Joey Galaxy, Meta Mega Gardevoir throughout the seasons that I had them, I think I only missed like one or two Focus Blasts. <coughs> when it mattered uh, and I'm like okay let's 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 play the cards let's play the cards to see if he does have it and uh, we do see here though uh, he does have the focus blast he does land it and I misplayed here I should have swapped directly into my slow bro because liability could have picked up the kill because I totally forgot this thing was scarfed I totally forgot I I found out this thing was scarfed and now I'm thinking now I'm thinking all that's left are his special walls. There, I mean, his special Pokemon. There is the Hoopa and there is the freaking Rotom Momo. I am done. My two Pokemon cannot handle these back to back. Um, and I'm thinking, oh god, here we go. We're starting off a 2 0 loss. This Hoopa's gonna just wreck us now. <laughs> I was so sad, you guys. I really was. Uh, but he ends up actually withdrawing the Hoopa. Goes out into the road. I'm thinking, what, Matt? If you landed this Focus Blast, you would have won. You would have won. But because he wanted to guarantee, uh, but because he wanted to guarantee that he was locked into Shadow Ball, 
he ended up swapping out, but the Heavy Slam picks up uh, the kill on Rotom, uh, on Rotom Mo, and in comes the Hoopa for its last turn, and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be awesome. I know I am guaranteed to live a Focus Blast. I am guaranteed to live. We're going to start the Season 2-0, and and then Matt, Matt, I love you. I really do, bro. But you did me dirty here, boy. You did me so dirty here with the Destiny Bond. Oh, Matt, I hate you so much, my dude. This honestly sucked. <laughs> he He's like, well, if I'm not going to win, I'm going to ruin your differential. And if you don't believe me that Matt said that, I have the messages to prove that. I will post it. <laughs> But because of that, Hoopa goes down, and your Salt Lake City Swamperts are now 1-0, uh, picking up the 1-0 victory over the Winnipeg Jellison and Coach Matt. So, awesome, awesome way to start off the season, you guys. Uh, I can't believe it. I, my blood is pumping. I'm still sick, if you can hear it in my voice, but my blood is pumping. I'm wanting to feel better so I can I can give, bring you guys better content and stuff. Um if you guys watched all the way to the end of this video, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, something I might want to do for future recaps is instead of... It's like do a mixture of post slash live uh, commentary. Like uh, like like what I want to do, like my, my, my idea for it is, is because I don't have a capture card, I can't record my live battles. But if I go through and I just record my camera... Uh, through the battle and my thought process in between each turn I can still bring you guys some form of live content then play it over uh, the the post video uh, that that happens so then that way it like you guys do understand my thought process because during these during these recaps and stuff while I can I'm keeping up with the video quite well you know my whole thought process is going a million miles a minute I'm putting in calcs I'm using every single second of my time between the turns and I want to show you guys that and just like the stress that goes through my brain blazing squid you know because he has a cap card he does it beautifully and we are we are we're both made fun of for taking it super super long on our turns but that's just how we are and so let me know what if you guys would like those kind of videos definitely leave a comment down below let me know what you think but I'm gonna stop talking now I've been going on too long and I gotta start building for week two where we are going to be going up against uh, Steven, the prez of TLTPG, and the coach of the Russellville Rockets. So, I don't have much more to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, definitely leave a like, comment down below what you think about the new video ideas, and if you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Sunbrother2. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.